In the race to build the ultimate weapon, precision wasn't just a goal, it was a necessity. While the story of the Manhattan Project culminated in one of humanity's greatest crimes, we shouldn't dismiss the ingenuity of those scientists involved. So to solve an unsolvable problem, American physicists figured out how to turn an explosion inside out. Let me tell you about it. As we all learned in history class, the Manhattan Project was the secret of American program during World War II to develop the atomic bomb. And it was frantic, as they feared the Nazis would succeed first, and that was unthinkable. So they tried all available methods, and ended up settling on two. A uranium-based gun-type design, and a plutonium-based implosion device. See, atomic bombs aren't really that complicated. All you need to do is get a lot of so-called fissile material in one place very quickly, and it will go super critical. A single atom of the material spontaneously splits, which in turn causes multiple nearby atoms to also split, causing a chain reaction. An explosion. The trouble is, that happens the moment all of the fissile material is assembled. So to make a bomb, you have to keep it separated enough so that it doesn't cause the chain reaction. Then you force it together when you want it to detonate. So a gun-type weapon essentially has two pieces of fissile material separated so that they're subcritical. Then, when you want to detonate it, you just shoot one piece at the other. And presto, you have a bomb. The trouble is, for technical reasons, this doesn't really work with the plutonium that was available in the 1940s, and the uranium it did work with was really hard to obtain. So the Manhattan Project only had enough uranium to make one of these rather simple bombs. It was called Little Boy. But they had lots of plutonium. See, typically you only need about 10 kilograms worth of plutonium arranged in a ball to make it critical. This basically ensures that there's enough surrounding plutonium that each fission reaction causes at least one subsequent fission. Unfortunately, it reacts too quickly for a gun mechanism to work. But if you could somehow compress it extremely rapidly, it could make a bomb, and you wouldn't need as much fuel either. So that was the plan. Somehow, take a safe 6.2 kilogram sphere of plutonium and compress it very quickly. And what better way to do that than with another bomb? And so the explosive lens was born, an incredibly precise arrangement of both high and low explosives that focuses the detonation wave in such a way that it compresses whatever is at its core. The trouble with explosive lenses is that getting the timing of the detonations and the shape of the explosives right is very hard. So they performed the Rala experiments. They built prototype explosive lenses and then, rather than wasting plutonium, they placed at its core a hollow metallic sphere with a small source of radioactive lanthanum at its center. This setup allowed them to test the explosive lenses while measuring the gamma rays emitted by the lanthanum, which acted as a tracer to reveal the dynamics of the implosion. When the explosive lens functioned correctly, the metal sphere would compress rapidly, an event captured by a brief increase in gamma ray absorption. If it failed, adjustments could be made, and the experiment repeated until the desired compression was achieved. And, as history shows, they were successful. Explosively so.